Hey guys, today I wanna to talk about extension tubes for macro photography. Now, if you're not familiar with macro photography, it's basically when you get really close up to a subject and you reveal all the details about that subject. Now, people like to take pictures of things like insects or flowers or different kinds of things in nature using macro lenses so you can see all of those details that are just difficult to see with a naked eye. And what an extension tube does is it takes a standard lens, such as a standard zoom lens or prime lens and converts it to a macro lens so that you can get macro photography out of something that's de not designed for macro photography. You can certainly go out and get a specially designed macro lens and the results from those are going to be pretty amazing. But if you don't want to spend a lot of money on one, you can print or build an extension tube and still be able to do macro photography, even if the results aren't as good as what you would get with a specially designed lens. Still, even with an extension tube, you can get some pretty decent results. It's a nice thing to have in your camera bag if you want to do some macro photography, even if that's not your main kind of photography that you typically do. So here's what it looks like once you mount an extension tube to a telephoto lens. Now this is a 300 millimeter telephoto lens mounted to two different extension tubes. I printed these on my 3D printer. I have a 30 millimeter ABS print right here and then a 90 millimeter uh, PLA print on this black one right here. And combined, they have a total length of 120 millimeters. Now each one of these tubes has a different application. If you're gonna be doing nature photography, you're gonna be walking around taking pictures of things like insects and flowers. You don't wanna to get too close to the subject to disturb it. So you wanna have a little bit of distance between you and the subject. And that's where a telephoto macro setup works. So you would use a longer extension tube with a longer lens. And this allows you to get some pretty decent magnification while being away from the subject. So you can stand up within a two or three feet away from it and still get some pretty decent magnification using a setup like this. If you're in a more controlled environment, such as a laboratory or table setup, or if you're just doing some kind of setup on a tripod and you were doing macro photography and that setup, you can get within one or two inches of the subject. You can use a shorter extension tubes with a shorter length lens, like a 50 millimeter prime or something like that. Either case works. Now, if I had to print these all over again, I would probably do four shorter tubes. That way I could have a 30, a 60, a 90, and a 120 and get the same results and then have some variability. And you just stack them like I did here, but without having to have one long tube and one short tube, but you still get the same kind of results. It doesn't really matter as long as you have the extension tubes that are clear and then they mount to your camera and then also to your lens and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna talk about how these work and I'm gonna talk about the math behind them. And then I'm gonna show you some samples of what you can expect if you're gonna be using extension tubes on lenses. So let's talk about how these extension tubes work. It's actually pretty straightforward. In a typical scenario, we have a subject, we're going to have a lens, and we're going to have a sensor. And the purpose of the lens is to focus light onto your sensor so you have a nice sharp image. Now, as you get closer to the image, the lens is going to adapt to that closeness by moving a focal element around in the lens. Different lenses do this in different ways, but they all accomplish the same task by just refocusing the light and you continue to maintain a nice sharp image on your sensor. Now, there's a point where you get so close to a subject that the lens can no longer focus light and you basically have gaps in the focused rays on your sensor. And that's what causes you to have a blurry image when you get close to the subject and your lens is no longer able to focus. So what an extension tube does is simply move the sensor back away from the lens just a little bit so that the lens can now again focus light onto the sensor and a nice sharp image will appear. So the distance provided by the extension tube is really a function of the lens that you're using. And we'll talk about the math about how that works in just a little bit, but that extension provides just the distance that you need so that you can take advantage of the magnification that being up close to the subject provides. But there is a trade-off in that you lose a little bit of light by doing that. And so you're basically limiting the amount of light that you're capturing by moving that sensor away, but you're able to gain that in magnification. So let's talk about the math behind this for a minute. You don't need a PhD in optics to understand this, just understand some basic division and addition. I'm gonna be using two different lenses to represent the extremes of this. I'm gonna show you some sample photos in a minute. I'm gonna use a 50 millimeter from Canon and a zoom lens from Tamron, but I'm gonna be using the long end of this. I'm gonna use the 300 millimeter end of this. 
there's basically two numbers that you need to understand the magnification of a, a given lens. You need to understand its focal length, in this case, uh, 50 from Canon and 300 from Tamron, but you also need to understand the magnification of the lens. Most people are familiar with focal length, but are probably less familiar with magnification. Magnification is basically calculated by taking a lens and getting as close to a subject as you can while still maintaining a sharp image. Uh, and so depending on how close you get depends on how large that image will show up on the sensor while it's still sharp. In the case of the 50 millimeter, it's going to show up at 0.2 magnification, or basically the image on the sensor is going to be about one fifth the size of the actual object that I'm taking a picture of. And on the 300 millimeter uh, lens, it's going to be about 0.25 or the image on the sensor is going to be about one fourth of the actual size of the subject that I'm taking a picture of. So keep those numbers in mind when we start talking about adding extension tubes to these particular lenses. So if I take a 50 millimeter lens and I add a 30 millimeter extension tube to it, the way that I figure out the magnification is I take the length of the extension tube, in this case 30, and I divide it by the length of the lens. So 30 divided by 50 gives me 0.6. So I take that number and I add it to the magnification of the lens, in the case of the 50 millimeter 0.2, for a total of 0.8 in terms of magnification. So basically I'm going to be getting 80% of the actual size of the subject projected onto my sensor, which means that I'm getting pretty close to one-to-one -one with just adding a 30 millimeter extension to a 50 millimeter lens. If I added a 50 millimeter extension, I would get pretty close to uh, one to one or maybe about 1.2 magnification uh, if I had something at that length, but I might have some challenges getting it to actually focus if I get beyond one. But in any case, uh, that's pretty decent magnification just using a 30 millimeter with a 50 millimeter lens. Now, if I take that same extension tube with a 300 millimeter lens, I have a 300 millimeter lens right here and I have a 30 millimeter extension tube. I take 30 divided by 300 for 0.1. Then I take that 0.1 and add it to 0.25 to get a total magnification of 0.35. If I did the same thing with that 90 millimeter extension tube, uh, I would take 90 divided by 300 and I would get 0.3 and I'd add that to 0.25 for a total of 0.55 or about 50% of what I'm getting from the actual size to the projected size. And if I take the two extensions and put them together, like I showed you earlier, I, I, I will get a 120 millimeter extension tube uh, against a 300 millimeter lens. So I take a 120 and divide it by 300 for 0.4. And I get uh, to add that to 0.25 for a total magnification of 0.65. So even though I have a much longer extension tube right here, the magnification is not nearly as what I would get for a 30 millimeter extension tube on a much shorter lens. And that just has to do with the nature of the optics and how they perform whenever you're uh, adding the extension tube to the actual lens that you're uh, using for macro photography. Now, the trade-off is that this particular lens right here allows me to be significantly further away from the subject. I can be a couple of feet away from the subject and get 0.6 magnification uh, by being that far away from it. To get the 0.8 magnification uh, using the 50 millimeter, I have to be very close to the subject. So depending on what I'm doing depends on which of these macro setups I'm going to choose. So if I have a uh, very controlled environment and I can be very close to something, this is going to be very conducive for that kind of photography. If I'm out and about, I'm taking pictures of insects and flowers and I don't want to get so close that I'm disturbing them, I might use something like this for that setup. Each one of these will still result in macro photography, but they're going to have different results depending on what you're doing. So to demo this, I took a series of images of a quarter using both the 50 millimeter and the 300 millimeter with and without extension tubes. Now I use the quarter because it's a fairly common object so you can appreciate the magnification that you'll get from a macro setup depending on which one you're using. And I took these images as is and converted them to JPEGs and I left them uncropped uh, in the software so you can appreciate the kind of magnification that you'll get from whatever macro setup you're using. So this first one is a 50 millimeter without any extension. And you can see that it's a nice sharp image of a quarter. Take that same 
lens with a 50 millimeter extension and you get something like this. This is 0.8 magnification. So 80% the size of the quarter is actually projected onto the sensor of the camera. And then you blow that up onto a screen, you get a rather decent enlargement of a quarter. And then with this one, you can see a lot of the details in George Washington's heads with all the scraps and nicks and dings and dents on this particular quarter. Now this one has a very shallow depth of field because it's an f1.8 lens. I don't have any manual control over the aperture on this particular lens. So if you have a manual control over the aperture and you want to get more depth of field, you can turn that aperture down and you will extend your depth of field. But this particular depth of field was so shallow, it was narrower than the width of the quarter. So I could either choose to have George Washington's head in focus or the text behind it in focus, but I couldn't really get both in focus at the same time. So that's one of the struggles that you're going to have with a setup like this. The 300 millimeter without the extension looks something like this. You have the quarter and you can see the, some of the details on it. You can see the, the text is in focus and the, the everything is uh, of decent quality with this particular uh, zoom lens right here on this particular quarter. Take that same 300 millimeter lens and add the 30 millimeter extension tube to it and you get a little bit more uh, zoom, you get a little bit more detail added to the image. And you begin to see some of the scrapes and nicks and dents and scratches on this particular quarter. Take the same lens, the 300 millimeter with a 90 millimeter extension and you get something like this. In my opinion, this is probably the most optimal setup with the gear that I've been using because you uh, get decent magnification, uh, but you have enough depth of field that you can capture uh, the quarter and you're able to get all the detail uh, except for some fade on the focus on the right side of the quarter. But in any case, you can see all of the scratches and nicks and dings and dents in George Washington on the and on the face of the quarter. The text is in focus, but you can see all the damage that's been done to this quarter over the last 38 years that this quarter has been in existence. Now for giggles, I added that 30 millimeter, or 30 millimeter extension to the 90 millimeter extension to give me a total of 120 millimeters of extension. And you get something like this, a little bit more magnification. And this one allows you to see even more detail. So uh, you see a lot more of the minutia that is really even hard to spot with a naked eye about this particular quarter when you start to get this kind of magnification. And that's what you also saw with the 50 millimeter with the 30 millimeter extension only. So at this level, you're beginning to get into that realm of macro photography that people really appreciate from macro photography. You get to see a lot of those microscopic details that just aren't there when you're looking at it with a naked eye. So these are the ones I printed. Now, again, this is my 90 millimeter extension tube. It's just a tube. There's no optical elements in it. And it costs me about 50 cents in plastic. This is the 30 millimeter and it has no optical elements in it. And it costs me about 10 cents in plastic. Both of these are very useful for different kinds of setup. And I'll put a link to the STL file in the video description down below if you want to print your own. Now, these are for a Canon camera. So these aren't for Nikon or any other uh, kind of setup. So you'd have to uh, get a setup for Nikon or Sony, or whatever you might have. But again, that's not hard to build in CAD software. Now, for my purposes, I printed these, but you can make these out of things like PVC pipe or cardboard using things like lens caps and some epoxy or some uh, glue, or you can just buy a set on Amazon. You can get a basic set for about 20 or 30 bucks, and they have some much nicer sets that you can pay a lot more for. In any case, getting extension tubes is not expensive. You can use them with your lenses and you can get macro photography. So it's not expensive to get into macro photography. Of course, if you want to spend some money on a macro lens, you can spend several hundred dollars on a macro lens, but your results will be much better than what you would get with a standard lens using an extension tube. Still, you can get great results with extension tubes regardless. So if you have questions or comments, drop me a question down in the comment section down below. Tell me about your photo projects. If you've used these extension tubes or use mine that you've printed, you can uh, show me your sample photos. I'd love to see some examples of what you're doing with these. And if you just have some remarks or if you just like to share this video, please do so with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.